again, once again, thank you. Thank you for that wonderful presentation, Charlie. Our final speaker for this segment, um, who will be coming to the stage shortly, is Anna Gong. And Anna is the CEO and founder at Prex Technologies. And so Anna, Anna's presentation is on monetizing on data-led customer actions in the API economy. And so Anna, when you are able, please feel free to share your slides and welcome to the stage. Great, thank you. Are you guys able to see my presentation slide? Yes, we are. Okay, perfect, thank you. So today I'm going to share with you the biggest, I would say the million dollar question is, how do you monetize on customer actions in the API economy? Um, many of the marketing communications solutions actually stop at the click-throughs and it creates a lot of vanity metrics, um, you know, whether it's impressions or read-through rates and click-through rates and so forth. But what we're going to talk about today is how does the API catalog and the Perks technology platform help you monetize on customer actions? Uh, and we'll go through a bunch of different use cases as well as, you know, what we've been seeing out in the Asia um, territory uh, since you know, any mobile first technology today is all API driven at the moment, uh, what we're seeing at, at least in Asia. And even in the financial services field, um, open API is actually endorsed and uh, also supported by the governments. And so we'll share some of those use cases. But, you know, looking at the whole evolution landscape, uh, one of our core purposes has really been trying to transient and, uh, you know, move these brands from transient transactional brands to more meaningful relationships with their customers, whether the customers are consumers, merchants or partners or corporate SMEs and so forth. But the evolution has been, you know, and when we look at the whole loyalty solutions landscape, um, in the you know, 20, 30 years back, it's been run like an ERP and it's still run like an ERP in the back office. But over the last 10, 20 years, it's been a lot of uh, ad tech platforms that came out of the, you know, the woodworks. And there's a very competitive landscape around uh, customer data platforms and really integrating with analytics and CRMs and different types of tools to make sense and to analyze historical data and then recommend the ne next best action. But today, what we're seeing in Asia Pacific, which you know, I I'm proud to say having come out of San Francisco and moving to Asia, and now I'm back in the States, uh, what we've seen in Asia is that the lifestyle super apps, uh, many of the Americans have not heard of what super apps are. It's the lifestyle apps that are actually coming out from telcos, from ride hailing apps, from t uh, banking, fintechs, and various marketplaces that are evolving outside of their core. And I'll share some use cases as well where, you know, even the uh, airlines, AirAsia, the southwest of, you know, Asia equivalent, they're becoming a super app going to food delivery and fintech, you know, when would you ever see like Southwest becoming a food delivery uh, marketplace? And so there's a lot of evolution coming out of Asia is primarily you know, driven by the fintech space. But when you look at all the trends in the consumer data, how do you really monetize when it's becoming such a competitive gray landscape where everyone is trying to vie for the wallet share and the mind share? And what we've seen um, in the ecosystem is that um, you know, even in Asia, a telco, sing, you know, you can Singtel, the largest telco in Singapore, is actually in partner and marrying with uh, Grab, which is the Uber equivalent of Asia, the ride hailing super app. And they're actually uh, joining forces to create a, um, Asia's first virtual bank. So it's almost like saying T-Mobile actually pairing up with Uber to become that virtual bank. That would probably never happen and you won't see that kind of trend. But in Asia, we see a lot of those trends where a lot of these traditional brands are actually moving into the whole mobile first super app space, but everything is fueled by wallets and FinTech and we'll share some of those use cases along the way. But how do you, you know, brands and you know, any B2C or B2B2C brands look at monetization from a lifestyle perspective? And are you capturing your customer's lifestyle behavior from morning all the way to evening to the weekends? And some of the wants and needs of customers and how are you monetizing beyond click-throughs? How are you monetizing beyond acquisition? Um, activation and engagement is one of the most difficult areas to actually master and to monetize on. But knowing what your customers are going through on a day-to-day -day, uh, and through the API integrations, we're able to um, make sure that we can influence the behavior of consumers. 
And looking at you know what all of these different types of enterprises, uh, whether it's uh, B2C, FinTech or marketplaces, um, it always starts with the acquisition strategy, but once it gets activated or maybe the first time usage, the abandonment is quite high. The churn is becoming very high because there's just so many choices and customers are getting so fickle. How are you capturing the mind share when the customers don't even have eight seconds attention span? And that's where the engagement is, is really the key center of attention right now. And how do we actually lead with engagement and not a loyalty program or a rewards program to start with? And I think traditionally what we've seen is that we stand up a loyalty program and hope that the customers will come but it's still unengaging. It's just a glorified ledger that's crunching, earning, and burning up points. And it requires the customers to engage with the brand rather than the proactive the other way around, right? Pushing um, to the customers. And so we use a very advanced gamification features to drive virality and also the gaming aspect of you know, teaming, quests like leaderboards, progress uh, bars. And when you ask to influence a customer's action and you want them to do a favor for you to transact or to uh, behave in non-transactional uh, behavior, you're now rewarding them instantly. So instant gratification era is actually fueling some of the, the Gen Zs and the millennials. And so what we're focusing on is really at the end of the day, driving customer lifetime value rather than focusing, fixating on loyalty programs instead. And so when we look at how the API economy has been, you know, driving a lot of these business problem statements, you know, I was talking to one of the global consulting companies, EVP of um, uh, financial services just earlier today. And he admits that North America is very behind in API's adoption by the, the large banking institutions, financial services. And so some of the things that they've created sandboxes to play with, but Asia's already leading the forefront with governments endorsing open banking APIs. Uh, but primarily around these problem statements, how do you actually enable instant gratification when the, you know, the digital natives uh, want and crave that kind of instant gratification? How do you measure customer journey milestones? Follow them through after click-through rates because once you send them an email, then what? Once you send them an SMS, then what? Are you tracking the user behavior, the milestones of transactional and non-transactional behavior? And how is that integrated with other MarTech stacks like you know, HubSpot, um, Salesforce, and all the uh, other marketing communication tools? And how are you measuring customer experience as a full, you know, NPS scores and so forth? So if you think about understanding in-app behavior, in-app transactions, it's all driven by APIs at the moment, um, it, especially everything is mobile first. And how do you monetize? So that's the, the million dollar question outside of core as well. Uh, traditional banks are now becoming lifestyle marketplaces. Telcos are moving into much more lifestyle oriented rather than just selling networks and pipes and, and data because it's then become a price war. So you've seen evolutions of traditional enterprises in, in many parts of the emerging markets moving fast and fury to becoming lifestyle brands and marketplaces. You know, even the ride hailing app is becoming a huge marketplace and we've been leading that for a long time in Asia and really bringing in those mindshare and they're competing with these big e-commerce shops like Amazon and Lazada, Alibaba and so forth. But what are those fundamental business objectives that you know we're solving at the moment, and what are the most common ones? And these are just examples. Um, you know, since we're talking about financial services, a lot of times, you know, even the buy now, pay later, the BNPL is the buzzword at the moment. Any bank um, can actually just switch the light on and offer a BNPL business model. But what about once you transition those accounts or how do you actually cross sell your existing you know, retail banking customers to adopt a buy now, pay later um, you know, business model? And what kind of actions and rewards um, behavior are you actually transacting or you know, influencing? And how do you manage you know, debt collection more uh, in a more dignified way? And how do you build that relationship where it's not like a loan sharking tactic, um, but you're really managing and building that relationship while you're still, um, you know, collecting timely payments and, and late payments as, as well. So there's a lot of different use cases in the fintech space, as well as telcos were, were designed and, you know, to serve the horizontal market as long as the brands are B2C or B2B2C. 
And even in banking, we're actually treating the merchants almost like consumers where the banks actually want to, you know, I'll give you a scenario in India, it's a volume play, right? One of the largest banks in India are onboarding um, the, you know, almost 40,000 merchants a month. And that kind of volume you might not even see in North America. And they want to influence the behavior of merchants, driving credit card spend, driving top of mind, you know, wallet share and increasing in-app transactions for the bank's brand. And so how are you now, you know, driving merchant behavior in a, in a teaming environment and in a uh, gamify, um, you know, instant gratification. So a lot of those use cases can be expanded into the B2B REM as well. When we look at now, you know, what Amazon has spent the last 15 years to build a really amazing ecosystem that powers their present um, marketplace. We also have um, a, a module that actually allows many different brands to actually stand up a merchant commerce ecosystem and create a net new revenue stream where you know they can focus on their core, but let us actually take the heavy lifting away from you and create a lifestyle ecosystem around your core and you can now onboard relevant high you know, margin partnerships, relevant partnerships, or let us actually fuel the and supplement or complement your existing partnerships with other lifestyle needs um, so that you can actually start creating that virality and engagement with your consumers. So focus on the contents and focus on the business model rather than going after and doing all of that manually. And so it takes us a, you know, a few weeks to help you stand up that whole merchant lifestyle ecosystem so you can start selling um, vouchers, brands, rewards, uh, not just rewarding them as a marketing tactic, but also to create that uh, commerce marketplace. And, and I'll share an example with one of the telcos that's doing just that in Asia. And this is the platform where we, you know, we had to create our own uh, category called lifestyle marketing platform because we don't belong in the CRM space because we don't manage data at rest. We manage data in motion. We don't belong in the marketing blast and communication tool sector because we go beyond click through rates and, and we actually drive and influence customer behavior to give you the impact from the last mile of redemption behavior, even to the, you know, to the POS or to the online checkout, we know exactly that they get rewarded based on this behavior. And then the rewards sit on their wallet and they can actually spend that wallet if they walk into a Starbucks one day and say, I wanna now redeem this voucher on the spot. And so it can be done any way, shape or form online and offline. But we, we leverage all of our different features and, and modules with a very sophisticated rules engine that if the you know out of the box rules are not present, you can use our rules engine to create ad hoc rules and events to trigger that is tailor made to your current problem statement. And so this is quite powerful. And that's the dynamic feature that we, we've been building. And when you look at the whole flow and the architecture flow from a user experience standpoint, we're not here to compete the backend systems or integrate with them. Everything is events driven. And on the right hand side here, um, you know, the, the space is quite cluttered and, and very uh, vast already. We complement and supplement these guys and we bring life to beyond click through rates because we're influencing customer behavior. Also, if there's customers that have already existing CRM, CDPs, the loyalty management solutions in place, we complement them and we also bring life to those static programs and unengaging data um, you know, platforms. And we would um, set up the campaigns, drive the virality and gamification. It's almost like, um, you know, think about Robinhood on steroids, but we're, uh, you know, we're, we're made to scale a uh, thousand folds you know, across the, the B2C ecosystem. And we're able to solve it for telcos, so for you know, marketplaces, e-commerce, uh, retail as well. As, and most importantly, our bread and butter is the, the financial services sector and FinTech. And when you actually set up those campaigns and you drive those gamify experiences through these different channels, now that you can track based on, you know, chaining of five user actions into one singular campaign, let's say for a fintech, I want to drive a KYC process all the way to the spending and referral um, actions. So once I KYC this person, I onboard them. Once they reach onboarding, I want to now incentivize them with um, a first activation of the, the usage of the product. And once they hit that first usage, I want to reward them again. And then that milestone of now I want you them to transact in a certain threshold. Once 
once that threshold is hit, I want to reward them again. So all of this kind of, you know, milestones or quest like behavior, whether it's sequential or um, non sequential, we can manage those types of behavior. And then further down the road, when you see them transacting regularly or sharing or, or whatnot, you can also create some referral programs um, with your most loyal customers, and then reward them along that chain. Once they get all of those rewards in the gamified you know, stream, they can sit in the wallet and we can um, definitely reward them online or offline. They can use those vouchers through you know, converting their points. Uh, we give them e-vouchers or through just giving them blanket or they can procure at a discount uh, other products and vouchers in the marketplace because they want instant gratification. So then as they walk into, you know, offline uh, Starbucks, they can actually now go to their rewards wallet and redeem that wallet and we can manage all of that last mile. So it's not just about e-commerce purchasing behavior, but we also want to see if we're rewarding the customer for their behavior, how are we tracking their, um, you know, lifestyle patterns and behavior? Are, are the rewards even relevant to them? And how are they spending their, their rewards? And in what way? Is it e-vouchers? Is it cash back? Is it points-based? How are they trading and exchanging these loyalty um, concepts with friends? Are they sharing the gift? Maybe the spa voucher, they can give it to their mom or sister rather than, you know, it, because the time of the month is the, someone else's birthday, maybe they, they can actually share that voucher and socially gift it. So there's so many ways that we can manage a lot of the lifestyle behaviors and consumption down to the redemption behavior. And the proof now is really about, you know, some of the customers that I've been working with in like this telco, the largest, one of the tel uh, largest telcos in Malaysia, they're kind of like the T-Mobile equivalent and uh, Asia, and they've been selling. This is a telco. You open the app, and here is you know what they you see as a, cu a customer, not just data and uploading and topping up your your data plan um, or paying your bill. You actually can go in there and buy different uh, vouchers, and then the team, the merchant team or the business team, can also on the fly update and upload different categories. Um, you know, if you start to sell insurance or other health and wellness products, you can add, add a tile, um, you know, here for you know medical related or insurance related products in, in the category. And then once you click on that, it will show you the display of various different FMB um, products and services. And so that's where you know they become heavily once you become a marketplace you can actually start to um, quantify and monetize all of the different ad tech components and that's where everyone wants to become their own closed loop ad tech platform um, data is king right another telco in you know singapore actually have been leveraging us for their gamification engagement platform um, capability where after 100 days of launch in the core of the pandemic last year their monthly active user by engaging them in a gamify manner increased by 27% and customer retention increased by 6%. And these are some of their own KPIs, by the way. Um, and then the acquisition um, increased by 11% and then NPS obviously rose by seven points. So this is quite relevant and it really depends on what at that time at the month or quarter your business problem statements or KPIs are the most urgent ones and the, many of the telcos you know talk about brands talk about cross-sell upsell when they create new partnerships but this one um, is some of the you know these are some of the KPIs that our um, existing customers are managing and here's a bank uh, one of the largest global banks that we've been serving um, you know, in 2019, with uh, some of the campaigns that they launched on our platform, you know, we're here to drive beyond vanity metrics. We have to create ROI and we want to showcase ROI from the first campaign that you drive on our platform. You should be literally realizing ROI after your first campaign because we're working with scale, right? We're working with large brands that have millions of end consumers already. And so with one of the, the uh, tactics that they've been working on, the customer journeys and the gamification element, they've been driving about you know $250 million in, in top line growth. And then within the first 60 days of 2020, um, they were able to you know, reach about $34 million of top line growth, all influence on our platform. And so we're not giving you vanity metrics, we're giving you real um, ROI here, a measurable ROI. And some of the um, you know, metrics behind the engagements, right? Um, how are they uh, receiving this campaign? Are they looking at the rewards? Are they actually engaging on this gamify uh, journey? 
And they were able to acquire, based on those unique customer engagements, 225% and drove over 500,000 customer actions. So it's quite unique, you know, in, in the way that we're taking this approach beyond the click throughs. And this is where we bring life to a lot of the marketing communication tools, as well as the, the data at rest platforms like CRMs and so forth. And the, one of the largest telcos within the first 30 days, um, you know, just targeting 1.1 million uh, post-pay customers, and they really wanted to A-B test this segment. Um, they drove over 670,000 customer actions and achieved $1.3 million um, just within that one, first 100 days. And that's 25X, you know, this is a campaign they're, they're, they were helping on figuring out, well, what do you mean by ROI? And we were able to measure, you know, 25X in, in the first 100 days. So leveraging, you know, gamification and when you are really gamifying all your customer actions you can actually imagine the revenue impact that it has on your your top line now let's look at something really cool our apis in action um, when we look at supercharging you know the the whole space the end game is to really grow your customer lifetime value and you know when we see uh, one of our customers doing a snappy saturday you know this is a telco in, in singapore the second largest telco they drove a 750,000 target audience campaign with one singular gamify campaign uh, with about 10,000 rewards so they wanted to run it for 24 hours and can you imagine how long it actually took to actually sell out the 10,000 rewards it ended in five minutes. So this is the virality that actually creates and the people's habits and behaviors, you're dangling something in front of them to get involved and it ended in five minutes. So it was so popular over and over again, every Saturday, they have the snappy Saturday campaign that they had to now parse the, the, the campaign and, and actually drive it in sequential rather than giving all away in one go because it was so popular. And so that's, you know, really in um, translating to 2000 requests per second. Um, and this is, you know, small population of 5 million, you know, addressable market in Singapore. So can you imagine, you know, the other territories across Southeast Asia, Asia Pacific and India, as well as North America and Europe. So um, th this is definitely, you know, the, the proof to the pudding. And here's some, uh, you know, our APIs with one of the telcos at play. Um, and we can track those APIs in this whole, you know, landscape. And you can see within you know, a certain time frame, I think this is a 12 hour or 24 hour time frame. You can see you know, how our APIs are at play um, throughout different times uh, of the day. I'll let it kind of let you guys see this. And they're headquartered in, in Kuala Lumpur. So you can see, um, obviously that's where the major hub is and all of the customer actions So yeah, I just this is the end of my presentation, and um, just maybe I can pause it right there um, so that you guys can see, ask me any questions. Thank you so much for that, Anna. Um, we appreciate all the wonderful insights. Unfortunately, we don't have time for questions. Okay. I will, however, say that, you know, you can continue to engage with folks in the chat. And then also, you know, I'll give you some time if you just want to share how people can get in touch with you and learn more about your work. Yes, um, please do find me on LinkedIn um, and uh, Anna Gong, the CEO and founder of Perks Technologies. I'm on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, would love to receive some of your questions and then um, we'll, we'll get a team to uh, answer some of those business problem statements and demo live in, uh, in those calls with you. Thank you so much. And we definitely look forward to learning more and you know, potentially also working with you, um, you know, for future endeavors. So thank you for your time today and enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everyone. You too.